The drive took fifteen minutes, but it seemed to pass in the blink of an eye. Too soon I was sitting in the driveway trying to get ready for the scene I knew. As sure as the lighting follows, thunder was waiting for me inside. Why had I been so eager to get there? I suppose I hadn't technically been all that eager. I suppose I'd just been escaping from what had happened in the parking lot with Heath. No, that wasn't... I wasn't going to think about that now. And anyways, there was probably some kind of rational explanation for everything. A rational and simple, simple explanation. Just Dustin and Drew were retards. Totally immature beer brains. I hadn't used a creepy new power to intimidate them. They'd just been freaked that I'd been marked. That was it. I mean, people were scared of vampires. But I'm not a vampire, I said. Then I coughed. Well, I, well, I remembered how hypnotically beautiful Heath's blood had been, and the rush of desire I felt for it. Not Heath, but Heath's blood. No, no, no. Blood was not beautiful or desirable. I must be in shock. That's it. That had to be it. I was in shock and not thinking clearly. Okay. Okay. Absently, I touched my forehead. It had stopped burning, but it still felt different. I coughed for the zillionth time. Fine. I would think about Heath. But I couldn't deny it anymore. I felt different. My skin was ultra-sensitive. My chest hurt. And even though I had my cool Moe Jim sunglasses on, my eyes kept tearing, tearing up painfully. I'm dying, I moaned, then promptly clamped my lips shut. I might actually be dying. I glanced up at the big brick house that, after three years, still didn't seem like home. Get it over with. Just get it over with. At least my sister wouldn't be home yet. Cheerleading practice. Hopefully the troll will be totally hypno hypnotized by his new Delta Force Black Hawk Down video game. Um, ew. I might have mom to myself. Maybe she would understand. Maybe she would know what to do. Ah, oh, hell, I was sixteen years old, but I suddenly realized that I wanted nothing as much as I wanted my mom. Please let her understand, I whispered a simple prayer to whatever god or goddess might be listening. As usual, I went in through the garage. I walked down the hall to my room and dumped my geometry book, purse, and backpack onto my bed. Then I took a deep breath and headed for the little and headed, a little shakily, to find my mom. She was in the family room, curled up on the couch, sipping a cup of coffee and reading Chicken Soup for a Woman's Soul. She looked so normal, so much like she used to look, except that she w she used to read exotic romances and actually wear makeup. Both were things her new husband didn't allow. What a turd. Mom? Huh? She didn't even look up at me. I swallowed hard. Mama? I used to call her that. Back in the days before she married John. I need your help. I don't know whether it was the unexpected use of Mama, or if something in my voice touched an old piece of Mom intuition she still had somewhere inside her. But the eyes she lifted but the eyes she lifted immediately from the book were soft and filled with concern. What is a baby? she began, and then her words seemed to freeze in her lips as her eyes found the mark on my forehead. Oh my god! What have you done now? My head hurt. Mom, I didn't do anything. This is something that happened to me, not because of me. It's not my fault. Oh, please no, she wailed as if I hadn't said a word. What is your father going to say? I wanted to scream. How the hell would any of us know what my father was going to say? We haven't seen or heard from him in fourteen years. But I knew it wouldn't do any good. And it always just made her mad when I reminded her that John was not my real father. So I tried a different tactic, one I'd given up on three years ago. Mama, please, can't you just not tell him? At least for a day or two. Just keep between, between the two of us until we, I don't know, get used to it or something? I held my breath. But what would I say? You can't even cover that thing up with makeup. Her lips curled weirdly as she gave the, the crescent moon a nervous glance. Mom, I didn't mean that I'd stay here while, I, while we got used to it. I have to go. You know that. I had to pause while a huge cough made my shoulders shake. The tracker marked me. I have to move to the house at night. Or I'm just going to get sicker and sicker. And then I die.
I tried to tell her with my eyes. I couldn't actually say the words. I just want a couple of days before I have to deal with... I broke off so I didn't have to say his name. This time purposefully making myself cough, which wasn't hard. What would I tell your father? I felt a rush of fear at the panic in her voice. Wasn't she the mom? Wasn't she supposed to answer the supposed to have the answers instead of the questions just just tell him that I'm spending a couple days at Kayla's house because we have this big biology project due I watched my my mom's eyes change the concern faded from them and was replaced by a hardness that I recognized all too well so what you're saying is you want me to lie to him no mom what I'm saying is that I want you for once to put what I need before what he needs I want you to be my mama, to help me pack, and to drive with me to this new school because I'm scared, and I'm sick, and I don't know if I can do it all by myself. I finished in a rush, breathing hard and coughing into my hand. I wasn't aware that I had to stop being, that I had stopped being your mom, she said coldly. She made me feel even more tired than Kayla had, I sighed. I think that's the problem, mom. You don't care enough to be aware of it. You haven't cared about anything but John since you married him. Her eyes narrowed. I don't know how you can be so selfish. Don't you realize that all he's done for us? Because of him, I quit that awful job at Dillard's. Because of him, we don't have to worry about money. And we have this big, beautiful house. Because of him, we have security and a bright future. I heard these words so often that I could have recited them with her. It was at this point that our non-conversation that I us in the, in our non-conversation conversation that I usually apologized and went back to my room. But today I couldn't apologize. Today I was different. Everything was different. No, mother. The truth is that because of him, you haven't paid any attention to your kids for three years. Did you know that your oldest daughter has turned into a sneaky, spoiled slut who screwed half the football team? Do you know what nasty, bloody video games Kevin keeps hidden from you? No, of course you don't. The two of them act happy and pretend to like John. The whole damn make-believe family thing. So you smile at them and pray for them and let them do whatever. And me? You think I'm the bad one because I don't pretend. Because I'm honest. You know what? I'm so sick of my life that I'm glad the tracker marked me. They call the vampire school House of Night, but it can't be any darker than this perfect home. Before, could I, before I could cry or scream, I rolled around and stalked back to my bedroom, slamming the door behind me. I hope they all drown. Through the two thin walls I could hear their making, her making a hysterical call to John. There was no doubt that he'd rush home to deal with me. The problem. Instead of sitting in, on the bed and crying like I was tempted to, I emptied the school crap out of my backpack, like I'd need it, like I'd need it where I was going. They probably don't even have normal classes. Probably have classes like ripping people's throats out 101 and 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 intro to how to see in the dark, whatever, whatever. No matter what Mom did or didn't do, I couldn't stay here. I had to leave. So what did I need to take with me? My two favorite pairs of jeans, besides what I had on. A couple of black t-shirts. I mean, what else did vampires wear? Plus, they are slimming. I almost passed on my cute aqua-colored sparkly cami, but all the black was bound to make me more depressed, so I included it. Then I stuffed tons of bras and thongs and hair and makeup things into the side pouch. I almost left my stuffed animals, Otis. The shish. Couldn't say fish when I was two. On my pillow, but, well, vampire or not, I didn't think I could sleep very well without him. So I tucked him gently into the damn backpack. Then I heard the knock on my door, and its voice calling me out of my room. What? I yelled, and then I convulsed into a bout of nasty coughing. Zoe, your mother and I need to speak with you. Great. Clearly they didn't drown. I patted Otis the shish. Otis, this sucks. I squared my shoulders, coughed again, and then went out to face the enemy.